let me ask you about some features. Yeah. So we, we talked about obviously the indentation that it's a typed language or optionally typed. Is that the right way to say it? It's either optionally or progressively. Progressively. Or, I think okay. the, so. So so people have very strong opinions on the right word to use. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I look forward to your letters. Uh -huh. uh, so there's the the var versus let, but let is for constants. Yeah. Uh, var is an optional. Uh, yeah, var var makes it mutable, so you can reassign. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, function overloading. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of source of happiness for me, but function overloading. That's, um, I guess, is that is that for performance or is that why does Python not have function overloading? So I can speculate. So um, Python is a dynamic language. The way it works is that um, uh, Python and Objective C are actually very similar worlds if you ignore syntax, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, Objective C is straight line derived from Smalltalk, a really venerable, interesting language that much of the world has forgotten about, but the people that remember it love it generally. Um, and the way that Smalltalk works is that every object has a dictionary in it, and the dictionary maps from the name of a function or the name of a value within an object to its implementation. And so the way you call a method in Objective C is you say, go look up, the way I call foo is I go look up foo, I get a pointer to the function back, and then I call it, mm -hmm. okay? That's how Python works, right? And so now the problem with that is that the dictionary within a Python object, all the keys are strings, and it's a dictionary, yeah. so you can only have one entry per name. You think it's as simple as that? I think it's as simple as that. And so now, why do they never fix this? Like, why do they not change it to not be a dictionary? Why do they not change it? Like, I do other things. Um, well, you don't really have to in Python yeah. because it's dynamic. And so you can say, I get into the function. Now, if I got past an integer, do some dynamic tests for it. If it's a string, go do another thing. Um, there's another additional challenge, which is even if you did support overloading, you're saying, okay, well, here's a version of a function for integers and a function for strings. Well, you'd have, to, even if you could put it in that dictionary, you'd have to have the caller do the dispatch. Mm -hmm. And so every time you call the function, you'd have to say, like, is it an integer or is it a string? And so you'd have to figure out where to do that test. And so in a dynamic language, um, overloading is something you generally, you don't have to have. So, but now you get into a, a type language and, you know, in, in Python, if you subscript with an integer, then you get typically one element out of a collection. If you subscript with a range, you get a different thing out, mm -hmm. right? And so often in type languages, you'll want to be able to express the fact that, cool, I have different behavior depending on what I actually pass into this thing. And if you can model that, it can make it safer and more predictable and faster and like all these things. It, it somehow feels safer, yes, but also feels empowering, like in, in terms of clarity, like yeah. you don't have to design whole different functions. Yeah, well, and th this is also one of the, the challenges with the, existing Python typing systems is that in practice, like you take subscript, like in practice, a lot of these functions, they don't have one signature, right? Mm -hmm. they, they actually have different behavior in different cases. And so this is why it's difficult to like retrofit this into existing Python code and make it uh, play well with typing. You kind of have to design for that.